Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at investment property, that is IAS 40. And by IAS, we're talking about international accounting standards. So we're going to be looking at investment property thoroughly in this lesson. And in the process of explaining everything around investment property, we'll be going through various exam type questions and we'll be showing you how to answer them. So I am confident that after this lesson, you should be able to understand this topic thoroughly if you work alongside us. So let's take a look at this. What is investment property? Well, investment property is land or building or both or part thereof held to earn rental income. And that is by leasing it out under an operating lease and or for capital appreciation, okay? So if you want to see if a property or land or building should be classified as investment property, you look at its purpose. And that is what is going to be very important even as we look at this lesson. What is the purpose? What is the building or the land you used for? That will determine whether it's investment property. So when you look at a property being used for rental income or it's being kept for its capital appreciation because we know that land or building uh, increases in value over time then you know that it's investment property okay a lessee and that is a person to whom a property has been leased will recognize the property as an investment property if it is leased under a finance lease so it's very important when you're looking at these words finance lease and operating lease so here we're talking about the lessee someone to whom a property has been leased okay so if the company so let's say for example company abc has leased a property under a finance lease then they will classify that property as investment property okay so let's get into it here are examples of property that would be classified as investment property so it's very important for you to take note of this as we move along property held for long-term capital appreciation and that's what we just mentioned in our introduction that if a property is held for capital appreciation if someone is buying a property or a company buys a property and it's and is waiting for it to increase in value then they are holding on to the property for capital appreciation and that property will be classified as investment property by the company okay property list out under an operating lease now remember we mentioned these two words operating lease finance lease so if abc limited so i'm going to use that as, as an example abc limited is a company that is leasing out a property if they're leasing it out to other people under an operating lease then they will classify the property as investment property why because they have rented it out in order for them to get the rental income and that is what we mentioned at the beginning as well now we've looked at operating lease and finance lease before so if you'd like to check those lessons out you'll find the links in the description below but basically if you are the company or if you are told this company is leasing out the building under an operating lease then that company will classify it as an investment property okay so if the same company let's say abc limited has leased out the property under a finance lease they won't classify it as investment property it has to be an operating lease and if they do not indicate whether it's operating or finance lease then it's most likely an operating lease unless uh, specified vacant property held for purpose of leasing in the future will also be classified as investment property Okay, so if a company has vacant property that uh, is, is currently vacant and they intend to lease it out in the future, then that property is considered to be investment property. Land and buildings held for an undetermined future use. So if an entity is holding on to land or building and they are not sure what they will use it for in the future, so it's an undetermined for an undetermined future use, then it is classified as investment property as well. Property that is being constructed or developed for future use as investment property will be classified as investment property. Now we're going to go through a few examples shortly where we'll look at uh, instances where a property is being constructed and uh, what the future use will be and we'll see how we account for that 
So if it's being constructed or developed and the company plans to use it as investment property in the future, then it will be classified as investment property as well. Okay, so let's continue here. Here we're going to look at examples of property that would not be classified as investment property. Okay, so this is going to be property which will not be classified as investment property. One of which is property that is leased out to someone under a finance lease. And that is what I mentioned when we looked at the point on operating lease. If ABC Limited is leasing out a building under a finance lease, they will not classify it as investment property. So take note of that. Property held for sale in ordinary course of business, obviously, if you're holding whatever you're holding uh, for sale in your ordinary course of business okay so if you are in the business of selling property you will not classify it as investment property it will be classified as inventory because inventory is whatever you sell in your ordinary course of business so it will be classified as inventory under ias2 okay property that is owner occupied okay what do you mean by owner occupied it means that the owner of the property occupies the property okay so that will not be classified as investment property it will be classified as property plant and equipment under ias 16 okay we've looked at property plan and equipment before and how to do the notes on that so you'll find the link in the description below as well property for use in the supply of goods and services or for administration use okay so this is property that is being used by the company to supply goods and services or it's using it for administration by administration we could be talking about the company using it for its headquarters how do we classify it it would be classified as owner occupied so that should be property plan and equipment under is 16. so if a property is being used by the company to supply goods or services or the company is using it as its head office then it would be classified as property plan and equipment so it will not be investment property so you pay attention to what the company is using it for and what its intention is that is what is going to determine uh what you classify it as property that is being constructed or developed for future use as owner occupied that will be classified as property plan and equipment under ias 16. so i hope these points are making sense and they are sinking in just so you know what you classify as investment property and what is not investment property. You see here, the most important thing is the use of the property, okay? So the use of the property will determine how you classify it. So that's one thing you always want to underline when you're reading a question or they, are, and they tell you that the company uses it for this or plans to use it for this, that is what will matter. So now that you know what will be classified as investment property and what will not be classified as investment property. Let's look at how we recognize investment property. What is the initial recognition? Initial recognition is obviously how it will be recognized the first time. Okay. So investment property is initially recognized at cost. Okay. So this cost could include the purchase price. If you purchased it, construction cost, if you, you developed it yourself, transaction cost or duties, as well as directly attributable expenses such as legal fees and transfer costs. These are the costs that will be used in the initial recognition of investment property. Okay, so if you have any of these costs, you'll add them together and that will be the value of investment property initially. And these costs do not include, very important for you to take note of this, initial operational expenses. So if you have any of uh, operational expenses, you do not include this as the cost of investment property. Abnormal wastage, you do not include this as well, as well as startup costs. So, so this will not be included as the cost of the investment property. Okay, so if you have investment property and you've classified it as investment property when you're initially recognizing it, take note of what to include and what not to include. And that is how we recognize investment property initially. What about subsequently? How do we recognize investment property? Well, IAS 40 allows the entity a choice of two measurement models, but states that once the choice has been made, it must be applied consistently to every property the entity owns. Okay, so you have a choice between two measurement models, but once you have made the choice, you have to apply that model consistently to every property that you own as the entity. The two methods are the cost model which is calculated by taking the cost minus accumulated depreciation minus any accumulated impairment losses. Okay, so this is using the cost model. 
The second one is the fair value model. The fair value of a property at balance sheet date is the value at which it could be sold for in an arm's length transaction between knowledgeable willing parties without deducting transaction costs. So the fair value is what you could basically sell the property for. So you'll have to see what the fair value is at the balance sheet date. And this would be at year end or at the end of your financial period. This value must take into account the actual and potential uses, market conditions at balance sheet date, rental incomes and future market conditions. So the fair value that you will compute or you will have has to take into account all these factors. But usually in your exam type question, you'll basically be given what the fair value would be. Under this model, the properties are not depreciated. So if you're using the fair value mo model, you do not depreciate your properties. Very important to take note of that. With the cost model, we do depreciate the property. Remember, like when we do the property plan and equipment. And that's why the formula for the cost model is cost minus accumulated depreciation minus any accumulated impairment losses. But with the fair value model, we do not depreciate the property. We just compute what the fair value is at year end or the financial year end. Under the fair value model, investment property is remeasured at the end of each period and the gains or losses accounted for in the profit or loss statement. Okay, that's very important. Using the fair value model, right, you will have to remeasure the investment property at the end of each period. Okay, and if it's a gain, that means the fair value has gone up, then you will recognize it in profit and loss as a gain. And if it's a loss, meaning the fair value has gone down from the previous period, then you will recognize it in the profit and loss statement as a loss as well. IAS 40 recommends but does not require that this fair value be determined by an independent and suitably qualified evaluator. So what we have done here, we have looked at initial recognition of investment property. We've looked at subsequent recognition. What about any expenditure that you incur after your subsequent recognition? Well, that will be subsequent expenditure. What is this? Well, subsequent expenditure can only be capitalized and by capitalized, we mean added to the cost of the asset if it meets the following two recognition criteria the probability of future economic benefits flowing to the entity as well as the cost being reliably measured. If you can measure the cost of the expenditure uh, relating to investment property, then you will uh, include it, you will capitalize it to the cost of the investment property. So let's take a look at our first example. We hope that you are gaining value from this lesson thus far. To continue, we charge a reasonable fee whereby the full link to the entire lesson will be provided. Our rate for the entire lesson are as follows. If you are within South Africa, we charge a rate of 100 Rand. And if you are outside South Africa, we charge a rate of only $10. If you wish to purchase the entire lesson, you can contact us on our email as you can see here below, info at counters.com. Or you can also check further contact details at our Facebook page at facebook.com slash counters. And you'll find this information in the description below as well. The outline for the entire lesson can also be found in the description below so that you know what exactly you will be purchasing. See you on the entire video. Cheers.